Well, good evening, and a very warm welcome to all of you here uh, this evening at St. Peter's for our carol service, Nine Lessons. Um, and welcome to anyone uh, that's watching on Zoom this evening. Welcome to you too. Um, I'm, I must say also, it was really good to see uh, some of you uh, at the walking nativity throughout this weekend. It's been really nice to see a number of people actually who I've not seen before, who've been watching things on Zoom and uh, finally see a, a face in the flesh. So that's been absolutely lovely. Um, so this evening, particularly considering last night's um, announcement, I hope that we would find um, some real encouragement and inspiration and hope this evening as we gather around um, the readings um, which point us towards Christmas. And as we sing song, well, as we listen to songs, um, which are so familiar to us. Um, and just before we get going, I just want to, just to make sure that I do this, just to say thank you so much to John and the choir who have uh, recorded um, these, these um, carols and to Don in particular, who has made it possible for us to be um, in this environment. And thank you to every reader who will be taking this uh, legilium this evening. So without further ado, I'm going to light our Advent wreath um, and we will begin our service of nine lessons and carols. As we move through our service, um, there are a number of readings which go back to back with carols. And rather than have me popping up in between each one, um, hopefully you've all got an order of service and you'll be able to follow it. And so um, if people come to read as they, they find that it's their place. Let me pray and then we will have um, Once in Royal David City. So Father God, we come before you this Christmas time, this really unusual strange Christmas time and we pray that we would meet with you this evening that we would encounter you Lord God that we would be um, encouraged that we would be filled with your spirit that we would be filled with hope and that we would go away from this place saying it was good to be there amen so once in royal David city Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that Thank you. 
So we come to the traditional bidding prayer. Let us pray. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in the town of Odeby and Diocese of Leicester. And because this, of all things, would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and then the mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels angels bring us all. Amen. We have our first reading. From Genesis 3, read by Mike. Because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Thanks be to God. The promise to Abraham 
The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Thanks be to God. seen the great light they that dwell in the land of the shadow of, earth, of death upon them hath the light shined for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor 
the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God. The Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Thanks be to God. to Mary, 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah 
took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Thanks be to God. The angel Shepherds go to the manger. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels 
went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. Thanks be to God. Matthew 2, verses 1 to 11. The Magi are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people, Israel." Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was born. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Thanks be to God.
So we come to our final reading, the incarnation of the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. And so we come to reflect on our readings this this evening. And I just share a short prayer just for us as we as we reflect together now so father god may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you may you be with us as we reflect on your word amen amen so christmas we've come to expect certain things of christmas haven't we christmas trees Advent calendars, Christmas carols, turkey, cranberry sauce and chestnut stuffing, gifts, maybe secret Santa, maybe some snow. Christmas lights, like the display as you just approach Port Pine Roundabout, or maybe on Palmerston Way, there's been some incredible displays around Leicestershire. Um, We kind of my, my wife and my daughter and I just kind of tend to go for a drive now in the evenings just to see what we can find. Truly astounding. But what else? Christmas. Assembling toys for children which are impossible to put together while surrounded by a sea of wrapping paper on Christmas Day. Perhaps someone doing something embarrassing at an office Christmas party. Exorbitantly priced but well-marketed German Christmas markets horrendous Christmas jumpers. Now, depending on your age, watching It's a Wonderful Life, Die Hard, Home Alone, or Elf, Christmas specials on TV, listening to Cliff Richard, or possibly nowadays, maybe more like Michael Buble. Rom-coms that make you feel like you need to have a romantic relationship in order to feel loved at Christmas. And then also maybe the John Lewis advert, the Coca-Cola advert, holidays are coming. I know that kind of did it for me when I was about six. It's all become a bit of a thing, hasn't it? What a Christmas blamange that is. We've traveled quite a long way when one of our main images for Christmas is advertising a fizzy drink. Now, don't get me wrong, I love almost, almost, all of that stuff. We got our tree up right at the beginning of Advent, like many, many of us. It was a bit of a balm for us in these unusual times. And our Christmas cake, well, it's just been iced, actually, um, but it was ready to be iced for a number of weeks. Um, I love those lights down near Port Pie Roundabout even uh, if they are a bit crazy. (laughs) And um, certain Christmas adverts fill me with nostalgia and a nice warm glow. 
as does a rendition of mistletoe and wine. It's just that all of this stuff is really quite far removed from the Christmas story, and particularly from, well, many, but all of our readings this evening. And I think this year we've, we've become even more aware of that. Like everyone else, I want to have a relaxing Christmas. I love the way that Christmas usually is with all of, all of that. <laughs> but I want to suggest this evening that our unusual Christmas this year, all of the upheaval, all of the difficulty, all of the masks, and even maybe the suffering of this Christmas in 2020 is actually far closer to the experience of that first Christmas in Bethlehem. I want to encourage us this evening that we are in good company as we move through this time of difficulty and struggle. Because as it says in our reading from Matthew 2 that Adrian so uh, ably read to us uh, this evening, when Herod heard from the Magi that they had come to visit the one who has been born King of the Jews, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. He was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. You see, the entry of Jesus into this world brought upheaval and disruption, and Herod knew it. If Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah, then it meant there was going to be battle before there was going to be any celebration, both with the status quo and the powers of death and hell. This slide, this image, is perhaps closer to the mark. It's a poignant depiction of events at the first Christmas when Herod is trying to get rid of the infant Jesus. And that's quite in contrast to what we were just looking at with our Christmas blancmange, isn't it? Quite a harrowing image. The first Christmas isn't concerned with brandy cream and tinsel, as great as those things are. It's about the entry of the divine into a broken and hurting world. And the first response of Herod, one of the rulers in this broken world, is to try and stuff out the gift of this divine baby right from the start. And so Jesus, the son of God, enters into his creation, not to condemn it, but to save it. And this is what he's greeted with, genocide in Bethlehem. And so one of the first labels that we might find ourselves attaching to our Lord and our Saviour is that of refugee, as Joseph whisks him and Mary off to Egypt. We're so used to Mary, Joseph, an innkeeper and a donkey. But the real, the fuller narrative wasn't so straightforward, just like our present circumstances are not so straightforward. And indeed, following Jesus isn't always so straightforward. The author, C.S. Lewis, wrote this. As you perhaps know, I haven't always been a Christian. I didn't go to religion to make me happy. I always knew that a bottle of port would do that. If you want a religion to make you feel really comfortable, I certainly don't recommend Christianity. That's not to put you off, obviously. But what C.S. Lewis is saying here is that following Jesus is not about escapism. He doesn't believe in Jesus because it means he will have an easy life. Be careful of anyone promising you that. He believes because it's true and it's real. And perhaps considering these present circumstances we find ourselves in, because when you follow Jesus, you don't have to pretend that everything is okay all of the time. Just to know that God is with you in it all. As Christians, we don't need to pretend that everything has been fine these past nine months. It hasn't. But we do believe that God is at work through it all. 
Just like he was in that first Christmas when the powers that be tried to stop Jesus before he even got out of the manger. God was at work through it all. This is a conviction that we see through the Bible and church history, that it is in the darkest times that God is doing his deepest work. The Russian writer Alexander Solzhenitsyn was even able to reflect on his time in the Soviet gulag. It was only when I lay there on rotting prison straw that I sensed within myself the first stirrings of good. So bless you prison for having been in my life. And that's where the real message of Christmas helps us. Christmas is a time where we see God descend into our utter brokenness, the utter brokenness of the creation, literally as a child under threat of execution. In the midst of such turmoil, God is profoundly at work, even if people like Herod couldn't see it. There's a reason why Christians find such courage from the often quoted verses from Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. The dark valley of the shadow of death is a real experience. We know this, but so is the fact that God is with us. Christmas is the time when Christians are to most fervently declare that God is with us. Even though we walk through the darkest valley, God is with us. He is, as we've heard tonight, Emmanuel. But he doesn't just descend into our mess to be with us and identify with us and be able to say those sympathetic words, I know how you feel. That's part of it, but it's certainly not all of it. This divine baby was the long-awaited Messiah who would heal the sick, raise the dead, die for our sins, and come out of the other side of death so that we could too. He descended into all of our stuff and our nonsense to show us a way out and a way ahead towards our Father in heaven, the one who formed us in the womb and thinks about us more than there is sand on the seashore, And just as our reading from John tells us this evening, that we might become children of God. You may have heard the song, Mary, Did You Know, this Christmas. And I think some of those words sum this up really well. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child you've delivered will soon deliver you. It might seem odd to us. Us people who are so often obsessed with power, with speed, with prestige, with having more and being important, that God would choose to bring about healing and salvation in this way. But this is the way of the kingdom of God. He uses the small things of the world. He uses the weak to shame the strong. And there are many examples of this throughout church history and all over the world, but perhaps one of the most famous is Mother Teresa. She is such a beautiful picture of how God works through the weakest to bring about profound transformation in this world. Because whilst recovering from tuberculosis, Mother Teresa felt God call her to be amongst the poorest of the poor in Calcutta. And with very few resources or know-how, she obeyed. And so back in 1952, she opened her first home for the dying. But by 2013, her ministry had spread to 700 missions across 130 countries. God took the obedience of a poor and sickly woman in one of the poorest places in the world and used it to teach the rest of the world what compassion looks like. Who doesn't know the name of Mother Teresa, that poor and sickly woman from Calcutta? God uses what we might see as small and inconsequential things to achieve his purposes. And so it is with this baby boy, Jesus, threatened with execution at birth, but will in time defeat sin and death by his death and resurrection. 
This strikes at the heart of why we celebrate Christmas, because it is the promise of what Jesus brings when he descends into our broken and hurting world. And it is the promise of what is to come when Jesus returns once and for all. And it will have been through all of the upheaval. It will have been done through all of the disruption and the difficulty, not in spite of it, but right through the heart of it right through the heart of everything that would seek to undermine the purposes of God. And he will have done it just as we see in the Son of God giving up the glory of heaven to be a vulnerable baby by using the weak things of the world to accomplish his purposes. So, if we are feeling tired, if we are feeling weak, if we are feeling vulnerable after months of readjustment, sacrifice, and possibly grief, then we are in good company, as this is how the King of Kings and his beleaguered carers came to this first Christmas. I hope and pray that you all truly have a very Merry Christmas, somehow. Full of all of those wonderful things of the season which I I mentioned earlier. I hope that some way there is a way to connect with loved ones this Christmas even in these unusual and challenging times. But just like in that first Christmas, let us remember that we can be confident that right through the middle of all of this upheaval, God is in our midst. Let us seek him out this Christmas as we rediscover what it's really all about. Amen. And so we come to our next carol. O come, all ye faithful.
So we come to a, a short time of, of prayer just before we come to the end of our service. So I'd just like uh, to invite you to, to bow your heads and we'll lift up our world to, to God. Father God, we at this Christmas time have become so aware of our vulnerability, our fragility, our lack of control, our, our need for you. And so at this time, we, we lift up uh, those in the health service. We lift up to, those, uh, to you those in government. We lift up to you those who are working um, really hard uh, in, in supermarkets and other essential shops um, throughout this period. We lift up to you um, those who have lost work at this time. And just in a, in a moment of quiet, I just encourage you to bring before God anyone who is on your heart this evening, anyone um, who you care about and you, you may be apart from when you would normally be closer. And so, Father, as we, um, as we move through the rest of this Christmas time, we pray that you would be with us. You would be granting us safety, that we would know your spirit with us in a new way. We would know your encouragement. We would know your hope and your presence with us. And, Father, we pray that you would open our eyes to see you at work in the midst of all of this disruption, all of this upheaval and all of this turmoil. Father God, would you open us, open our eyes to see you afresh, just in the same way that you were at work at that night in Bethlehem, when so many were just oblivious to the fact that the Son of God had been born. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed being here this evening. I hope that you've enjoyed um, hearing all of uh, those familiar carols. And thank you to everyone who read so ably, um, some, some real gravitas to those uh, readings this evening. Um, just before um, I bless us and we have our final carol of uh, Heart the Herald, um, I just want to flag up the, uh, the crib service, which will be on 24th. Um, we have the uh, nativity video which has been put together uh, by the peters place team um, so that will be i'm really looking forward to that we will have that being shown here on the 24th at uh, 4 p.m and then midnight communion as uh, as usual again here at 11 30 and then christmas day at 10 o'clock uh, so may the joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So we finish with.
Zeit.